just for a moment and allow some people here to join in and participate in the live this morning. But I do hope everybody is well. I do hope you've been watching these videos. And as I said, if you miss them during this live event, you can watch them afterwards. I'm uploading them to my Instagram, to my YouTube, and to my private Facebook group. And all of those links can be found uh, in the one link tree link in my profile. We have an incredible conversation today. So if you're scrolling through social media or on TikTok and you just so happen to come across me, stop and chill out. I promise this is going to be a great conversation. And if you're out there and you're on Instagram and you see me, good morning, Chris, and you see me out there, I'm good, Jill. How are you? How are you doing? How's everybody doing? Yeah, it's nice to see you here for live, Chris. So that's what I'm saying. If you got some time, just chill out for a little bit. We're going to have a great conversation and we're going to have a nice meditation today. And if anybody has any questions, anything they want to share at the end, you're always more than welcome to. I always, you know, respond and answer if I can. And if you don't feel comfortable sharing, expressing, asking a question, you're always more than welcome to private message me on TikTok and Instagram. I respond to everybody. Sometimes it might take a couple of days if there's a lot of uh, messages, but I do respond to everybody. Aside from that, today's conversation, you know, we're almost at two weeks of doing this. I'm here every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a conversation and meditation, and I answer your questions when you have them. But, you know, we started off last week with, you know, talking about breaking free from the chaos and setting up our personal space and forgiveness and self-love and the present moment. And we've been doing all these wonderful things. But there is a main reason that we all want to become better. And it might not be something that's on our conscious mind, but it is something that works behind us. And we have this innate sense inside that we should be or we are a part of something more than just our individual selves. And that is true. We are. Aside from the universe and ethereal and divine and celestial aspects of who and what we truly are, we are here right now on this world, on a planet, and we know we have to care and nurture for this planet. We know we are divided racially, spiritually, economically, uh, environmentally, p politically, religiously, on every, uh, racially, on every aspect we could be, there is some sort of opposition. And we get brought up and we're raised in this world to really all of a sudden have this mind full of expectations, imaginary hypothetical situations and what ifs. And we really look at the world through that lens, through that damaged, scarred, abused, misguided lens. And we actually start to hold the world hostage and others to our perspective. We're not happy. We're displeased when the world is a certain way. Why isn't everyone doing this? Why aren't they doing this? Even in our own homes, in our relationships, why isn't my partner understanding this? Why aren't they getting it? Why aren't they raising? So we've been conditioned to be this type of a being who is constantly putting our energy and expectations out onto the world. But what happens if we stop for a moment, we ground ourselves, and we redirect that focus to ourselves, and we start doing all the things we've been doing, and we get to a point where we understand that the best thing we can do, really the only thing we can do, and one of our beautiful divine purposes is to be the change we want to see in the world. Now, we've heard this phrase from Gandhi. We've heard it in, in a variation from Buddha and Jesus. Every single prophet, every ascended master, every guru has their way of saying that you have to be the change you want to see in the world. You live in the world that you create. Now, you might not be creating the violence and the horrors, but if you are focusing on it, you are resonating in it, and that's the energy you are existing in. That's the world you are enabling to exist. So if we redirect our focus, as I have been emphatically pounding into your heads every day about focusing on the things that inspire you and make you feel good, you slow, slowly start to become the change you want to see in the world. When we change expectation to hope, 
that allows that freedom, that disconnect from that heavy binding energy. And when we take the time to go within and rediscover who and what we truly are, we become the observer. And then we are truly being the change we want to see in the world. It does not happen. Thank you, look at that. At the same time, hearts on TikTok and hearts on Instagram. Thank you so much. I love that, it inspires me. And for the billionth time, I don't care who you are, where you're from, who you pray to, salute, all those things. I don't care what you've done in your life. I'm here opening up this community with freedom and equality and kindness and compassion for everyone. And when I see the hearts on the screen, I know you get it. I know you feel it. And I know when you take that moment to tap the screen and send that heart back, that that is you showing me that love and that gratitude back and sharing that energy with me. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So as I was just saying, thank you. And really, it has nothing to do with the algorithm. It's just inspiring to know you're there. You're listening. You hear me. You get it. Yes, we can be the change we want to see in the world. I mean, just even this past couple, this past December, I got sick. I got a pneumonia. And from that pneumonia, uh, I, oh no, I forgot to do that. No, no. Please tell me we're still here on Instagram. Before I continue, hold on, see? I apologize about that Instagram. Please tell me you can see me before I continue. Let me know you still see me. Just one of you, I'm so sorry about that. I'm sorry, TikTok, we're gonna hold for one second. I forgot to put my phone on do not disturb and a call was just coming in and when that happens and it doesn't on TikTok, it interferes with it. It's lagging badly. Tell me when we're caught up. This is really important because I don't want you on TikTok to have a, a bad video today. So are we caught up? Are we back? Are we here? Are we good? Everything just, I need a thumbs up or something and I'm so sorry. It's okay now. So anyway, I apologize. That is completely my fault. I forgot to hit the do not disturb and, and all right, we're all good, we're back. I'm so sorry about that, everybody. So what I was just saying, quick story, was this past December, I got sick. Went out to Vegas to see you 2 at the Sphere and visit a friend, my friend Craig. And <clears throat> when I landed and got off the plane, I was sick. I felt it, I had the chills, but I was like, you know what, I'm here, I'm pushing through with it. Get Dayquil, went to, back to the hotel, took my nap, all this nine yards, came home, was in bed for three weeks. Got really sick. I didn't know what it was. COVID, took tests, wasn't COVID. The flu, all these things. So I was just really sick. Uh, and in that three-week time, I lost about 15 pounds, right? Which was great because I was a little overweight. And so I eventually had to go to the emergency room because my heart started to go AFib. Uh, it was a, an erratic heartbeat. It was very sporadic. It was very hard. Went to the hospital at the suggestion, a referral of a friend saying, you know, you sound like you're an AFib. Long story short, I was. I was in the hospital for a day. They gave me these medications for uh, cholesterol and for uh, high blood pressure and blood thinners. Since I was AFib, you know, they, you don't want blood clots and a stroke. Anyway, the medicine caused me to retain so much water that I immediately, within like 10 days, gained the 15 pounds back that I had lost. And then I gained like another 10 pounds on top of that. And I felt like shit. And this is, this is January, February, my birthday, this past just two months ago, a month ago. So I finally got to the point where I was like, that's enough. You know, I, the doctor said, try this, do this. And again, this is the same thing that happened to me about 12 years ago. I got up to, went from 180 to 230 pounds, I got sick. And then I did exactly what I'm doing now. And in one month, I lost almost, it was about 55 pounds in a month. Now, right now, I've been doing my, my routine again every single day. And in the last two weeks, I've lost a solid 15 pounds. And tomorrow, I'll probably be down another two pounds. So when I say, you know, being the change you want to see, it's not easy. It's hard. It takes discipline. It takes giving up things, breaking bad habits, incorporating new ones. But it is worth it. And here's why. Here's why. 
Every single, whether you believe this or not, every single choice and action we make, every single choice and action we make contributes to the world's condition. Let that sit for you a minute. Think about that. Every single choice and change and decision I make affects the world's condition. Yes, it does. If we choose kindness as our daily interactions, we are spreading positivity. If we're choosing frustration and anger and projecting and interacting from that, we are spreading negativity. If we are recycling, we are taking care of the planets. If we are you know, practicing declutter and, and disassociation, we're easing the monetary stress that we put on ourselves as a society. So simple, simple changes, simple changes can lead to significant societal and personal benefits, okay? So when we say we want to be the change in the world, this truly means letting go of that aspect of expectation on the world and going within and doing the work that we need to do within ourselves. That means the healing, the in the eating habits, the way we're responding and reacting, the thoughts we're having, the words we're using, the manifesting abilities we're ignoring or, 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 or taking advantage of, what we're seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, thinking, interacting with, and breathing, my friend. We have to change it. And I have said many, many times that 99.9% .9 of the human perspective is lost, misguided, and broken. We do exist factually in a society and a way of life that was created by other people so long ago and we had no saying it. This way has been handed down generation to generation to generation. But finally, we're here. We are a species and at a time that we are elevating our consciousness. More people are waking up. We have technology that is showing us that we can be free from being monetary slaves. We can create the things that we see in our imagination with AI and bring these beautiful images and films and stories to life. Finally, it, it doesn't take just a select few or to be a celebrity or to be this, to be able to create and be seen in our world anymore. We can push live record and we can send it out there for everyone so we have so many options and so many resources at our hand it truly is time my friend for us to be the change we want to see in the world for, for to 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 really become those beings that were just infinitely grateful and abundantly content with our lives and who we are and what we have to look back on our lives not with regret and anxiety and fear but with love and hope and forgiveness, to look forward with optimism and hope, not uncertainty and fear, and to be here now, not holding each other hostage to some tradition or some religious belief or some political structure. As I said, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're white, black, Indian, Hindu, Asian, I, I don't care. I don't care if you're Muslim, Jewish, atheist, I don't care. Fat, skinny, white, black, yellow, green, good, bad. Biden, Trump, I don't care. I don't care. I only care that you are truly trying to really realize that those things are the illusionary aspect. Those are the man-made construct. That is the false matrix in here that beautiful stillness, the universe and everything beyond it exists because we are a part of something that has awareness, consciousness. You and I, my friends, are so incredibly not human. <laughs> that is a word that limits us within our mathematical equations and our alphabet. And we are so much more than that. We come from the stars. We are made from the stars. We are electricity and energy, and we are bio biology and technology. We are everything and everything all wrapped up in one. So really, my friend, you deserve to be the change you want to see. Because that version of you that is inside you, beyond all of that stuff, is beautiful. 
it's hopeful, it's inspiring, it's kind, it's loving, and it is magically powerful, my friend. Okay? So, let's see. You know, there are so many things we can do. Being the change, let me just say this, being the change uh, we want to see in the world isn't only about us changing ourselves and just being that beacon of light. You can do things that you believe in if you want to help out in shelters and share that or become an advocate for some cause that you believe in. These also are ways that you can contribute to being that change. If you see something that you don't agree with in the world and you feel it's a part of your path and purpose to speak out against these things, these injustices and stuff, then my friends, do it, stand up and, and live your life. Be the change you wanna see in the world, all right? so. Before we do our meditation this morning, uh, I want to give you your journal prompt. And don't worry if you 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 know don't write it down right now, uh, or don't or don't memorize it, uh, because what I did yesterday and what I'm going to do from now on. Yesterday's uh, session we had about I'll read that at the end. I promise. Uh, yesterday's session we had about. Uh, 10 or 12 affirmations that I didn't go over live. So what I did on YouTube and in Facebook is in the description underneath the video, I listed those, those affirmations that you can use. And for today, what I'll start doing, I didn't do it yesterday, I'll also add the journaling prompt. Each day I've been giving you a reflective question, something to go on and think about or something to write down in your journal and ponder and reflect on. And I have today's and I'm going to say it right now. So I have it written down in front of me. What is one small change I can commit to making in my daily life that aligns with the broader change I wish to see in the world? And how does this change impact both myself and others around me. I'll read that one more time. What is one small change I can commit to making in my daily life that aligns with the broader change I wish to see in the world? And how does this change impact both myself and others around me? And again, if you don't write that down, it will, will be in the description uh, on the replay in YouTube and uh, Facebook and Instagram as well. I can probably put it up here as well. I can just edit and put it down in the description. Okay, so. Nice shade of green, right? Kale, a whole lot of kale, uh, a whole lot of celery, uh, a few cucumbers, a bunch of green apples, a bunch of green pears, one whole lime, and about a nickel uh, chunk size of ginger. Incredible. <laughs> and I'm using this to obviously help my body regain some nutrients, micro and macronutrients, and lose the weight instead of snacking or drinking Snapple or bread and sandwiches and carbohydrates but you know we do need uh, fiber in our body as well now this is juiced so it takes most of the fiber out so what i also do twice a day is make smoothies when i really get hungry when my stomach's going no we need something substantial i'll take the green juice put that in my blender my nutribullet and then i'll add in a banana a bunch of strawberries blueberries and then some like frozen peaches frozen mango uh, blackberries, raspberries, whoosh, grind that up in there and I have an incredible smoothie. Oh, don't get me wrong, I miss the things you know that I, I like to eat that aren't so good for us, but when I get to the place I want to be and I get back to where I want to be, then I can have my cheat day. I can have Sunday where I can have chocolate chip cookies and pancakes and all that shit that I won't eat during the week. But simple cardio, simple cardio, Simple cardio, good eating, flexibility, stretching, cardio, and this. And I do, you know, I use resistance bands, but I'm a big fan of what's called dynamic tension. Uh, 
I studied martial arts for many years and dynamic tension is instead of just standing here, you know, going like this, what you're doing is you're you're tensing up your muscles in your body and you're using that self-created resistance to define and tighten up and burn off calories and stuff. And you have this, you can remember I always say you woke up this morning with everything you'll ever need in this world, and that's the truth. So there was your question. Now we're gonna get into our meditation. We do have some affirmations in our meditation today because this is all about being the change we wish to see in the world. And for those of you who have been taking part in this every day, who have been watching the videos and really trying, you know, if you can't meditate with me the entire time, that's fine. For those of you who have been trying, kudos. It's better to try and move forward than to sit still or go backwards. So I'm really, I, I don't believe in these types of words, but you know, that sense of pride, I'm, I'm excited for you. You know, it's not, I'm not proud of you. I'm excited for you, okay? So please keep going and continue it on. And as we get into our comfortable position, physically, mentally, right? As you're getting into your comfortable position, I want to talk about something as we're just sitting and, and reflecting on the skin. And you could do that now. You've been watching each day. As you're with me, just begin to relax your face, the skin on your face, working down. We'll take a few breaths, but you can start engaging that. Breathing in, the awareness of the tension and places on the face that we want to relax, right? When we're meditating, when we're in the meditation, if you become uncomfortable, if you become anxious, if you get too overwhelmed with a thought, there are things we can do. Even discomfort, if you're getting a cramp or something, don't sit, don't endure that. As I say, we want to alleviate the distraction. But if you're in meditation and your mind is really getting the better of you, you can't come back to your anchor. The thought has you. There are things we do in meditation. One, you can simply stop. You can simply stop at any time, come back to it later when you feel better. You can. If you're too overwhelmed, too anxious, it's too much for you, you just simply stop and let go and come back to the meditation later. If we're doing a technique in the meditation that you can't do, but you still want to stay in the meditation, then you just simply focus on your breath. If something's going on, we're visualizing and you're having trouble doing that, just focus on your breath and listen and stay in the meditation. Another thing you can do is the line on the hand, we call this in meditation. If you're lost in thought and you're really getting overwhelmed and you feel trapped, you pick up your hand, you take your finger now, and you drag it across the palm of your hand. Try it right now. You feel that. It's not a pleasant feeling, but it brings you right back to the present moment. So if you're meditating and you're getting lost and you realize it, you just pick this up and you focus on that sensation in your hand and now you're back here and then you return to the technique. I kid you not. All right, so don't feel like you have to endure it. Don't feel like you have to sit still like a statue. If there's an itch on your face that's driving you crazy, simply alleviate the distraction. The only thing I ask, if we're doing a closed eye meditation, close your eyes until I say differently, okay? So... Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into some meditation and then we can do some questions if you have it. So please, as I said, a comfortable position, spine upright, nice and relaxed, right? Hands down, shoulders even, back straight. You're not forward, you're not leaning down, we're just even. And as far as the head, as we relax in meditation, you see it all the time, the head goes down like this. It's a really bad position, especially somebody like me who has a rupture. I do it. I'm guilty of it. It happens. I always go like this. But there is something else you can do if you feel comfortable and are conscious of it. It's kind of like the headlock position, right at the crease of your head and neck. If you just kind of push your chin out a little bit and your neck and just arch, lift your head a little right to that place, there is a space there where you can comfortably relax your head in the opposite position of down. 
and it is okay. It looks weird. Meditation teachers never do it because they're like, everyone's looking up my nose. But health-wise and benefit-wise and for your body, it is better than just relaxing down. Okay? So with me, straight up, head straight. Deep breath into the center of the chest. We rest into that breath for a moment. And on the exhale, we're relaxing our face. The skin, the temples. Breathing in. The cheeks, the jaw, the center of the face. Sending the intention of relaxation. Feeling it. Adjusting. Breathing in. Even the tongue pressing to the roof the bottom and letting go in the middle and even good breathe in again the shoulders the neck the chest feels nice the stomach don't forget the back the intention of relaxation feeling you adjust and shift breathing in Hips, groin, buttocks, thighs. And exhale. Shins, toes, feet, ankles, and heels. Breathing in. The whole body. Two more. And exhale, closing your eyes. Continue to take deep breaths in. Letting any tension that still exists go with each exhale. Breathing in. Resting into the breath and exhaling any stress and tension. One more breath in. From the top of the head down to the seat, relax the body and let go of controlling the breath. Gently take a moment. Let your breath return to normal. Feel and sense the stillness within. Acclimate to this moment. If you hear sounds around you, people, the hum of electricity, the frequency of the universe, don't try to resist and block anything. Let everything, everything in this moment be as it should be. No expectations, no ultimatums, no judgments. If thoughts enter the mind, if the mind wanders off into thought, that's okay. See the thought, accept the thought, feel the emotion associated with the thought, and just return within. Gentle, peaceful, natural breath. The infinite nothingness of the mind's eye and the calmness of the temple we are within. As you sit within, 
in the mind's eye, begin to visualize the changes you wish to see, the world you hope to see. Envision who you hope to become. Truly see these images, yourself, the world, the people around you, the benefits of the positive energy, the love, the gratitude, all wish you to become. All what you wish to become. Envision this in the mind's eye. Let your mind create the images and scenarios. See the people, the places associated with whatever it is you truly wish to be. As you see these events and actions, as you feel these emotions, let them rise within, let that gratitude, that love, that positive energy just blossom within you right now. I want you to draw a deep breath into the center of your chest and as you do, repeat after me, breathing in, I am a catalyst for positive change and exhale. Breathe in. I embody the change I hope to see and exhale. Again, I am a catalyst for positive change. I embody the change I hope to see. Repeat again, I am a catalyst for positive change. I embody the change I hope to see. Let go of the affirmation let go of the breath. Let go of any images. Focus on the nothingness. Relax into this moment. And just be. Notice in this moment how you can hear everything. Notice how you can feel everything without even looking, without even touching. Even your own body. Without looking, without touching, bring your awareness to your right kneecap. You can feel it. You can sense it. It's there without even seeing and touching. Your left elbow. You can feel the skin, the bone inside. You can feel the nerves twitch. Even the top of your head you can feel that tingling energy around the crown as we send and receive in and out of the vessel. We are so powerful, my friend. We are so much more than we perceive to be. 
And if you spend time in here with me each day, if you listen to these simple words, you will become the change you hope to see. And even better and beyond that, the world around you will change. Breathe in, my friend. Breathe in deep. Exhale. I am a catalyst for positive change. I embody the change I hope to see. I am a catalyst for positive change. I embody the change I hope to see. I am a catalyst for positive change. I embody the change I hope to see. Let go of the affirmation and spend a moment in stillness and silence within with me. If there are thoughts, let there be thoughts. If there are sounds, let there be sounds. Let everything be as it should be in this moment. Breathing into the center of the chest, lengthen the body. Breathing in deep into the center of the chest. Gently wiggle the toes and fingers, moving the head left and right. And exhale. Keeping the eyes closed. Another breath in. Grounding and relaxing the body in this moment. Exhale. With your eyes closed, continue to stay within for another minute or two. And when you feel ready, slowly open your eyes. You're still there. That's good. No lost connections. That's great. When you come out of the meditation, still take a moment. Still take a moment and 
sense, become aware of how you now consciously here still have that peaceful, calm, grounded feeling inside. We're calmer, we're more responsive, we feel from and sense from a different place, so you can interact and react from this place. And the beautiful thing is, the more we do this each day, the more we strengthen our capacity to be here in the present moment and respond and be from this beautiful place of stillness within, my friend. So I really appreciate that. I like the fact that we're doing this every day now, finally. And it's, it's incredible, my friend. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. And you really deserve this. Like I said, it has nothing to do with me. I don't want anything from you except for you to give yourself the time to find your way at home. And I want to be there to help you through that noise and information to properly guide you there. You're welcome, Jill. No problem. You are welcome. Uh, let's see what we got here. I see something there. Good afternoon from England. I can do with some guidance. What's going on, Taxi? I see your question. Uh, Kelly, green leaves don't have a lot of pesticides. Green leaves? You mean like the kale and all that stuff? I buy organic and I wash my produce. I mean, I suggest you always wash your produce and if you can buy organic in your area buy organic but I mean I'm, I'm not going to you know I would rather eat the plant life out there as opposed to the processed chemical laden food that's on the shelves in the supermarket so uh, but no you wash I wash all my fruits and vegetables I wash my kale every single leaf uh, I always bang out my broccoli you know, any worms and things. It's not just pesticides, it's also insects. You know, bang your broccoli next time before you cook it or cut it and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff comes out. Uh, so yeah, I do take care of my stuff, but I, I'm not concerned about the pesticides and stuff. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, just wash your produce, buy organic, and, uh, you know, eat less processed foods. <coughs> a good way to think about it is in a supermarket, Stay out of the aisles. <laughs> Think about this. If you stay out of the aisles and just circumnavigate the store, you've got like your bakery goods, you've got your uh, fresh produce, you've got the meats and the seafoods and all those things. All the fresh stuff is always on the outside. It's always really the packaged process stuff in the aisles. So try and do most of your shopping in that outer section. And even if you're eating meats and, and things like that, you know, uh, beef and stuff, you know, I, I, I would stay away from red meats and things like that. You know, uh, very lean proteins uh, are the things that I would stay towards. I personally don't. I don't eat it. And it, it has nothing to do with the health reasons that I'm telling you. It's just a moral thing for me. I, I just, I can't condone killing another life for a piece of pepperoni on my piece of pizza. I can't. I can't. I don't look at animals like soulless, uh, just other beings. If you read my first book, you can read it right now. Click the link on my profile. Uploaded it to Google Drive. Yeah. You can read it for free today. This book right here. It's on Google Drive. And I actually ask, it's a channeled book. I ask, should humans eat meat? Should we eat animals? And the answer in here is incredible. Uh, this really is a beautiful book, an incredible book. The Book of New Light. You can read it today for free. Clicking the link on my profile. I've uploaded it to Google Drive. No email, no data collection or anything like that. No money. Um, you know, I, we are not, like I just said before, humans. We're not only um, limited to the human experience. I, the simplest way before I say goodbye and I'll see you tomorrow is this. I've been everything from a maggot to a fly to a butterfly to a bee to eventually me. And I will evolve to other things beyond here, beyond my imagination, beyond this world. Whether it's a tree or the air in between, I believe every life form is our individual energetic awareness experiencing different worlds, different realities, different lives, different bottles, bodies. So for me, 
a cow, a bird, a fish, a tortoise, a dog, these can very well be my grandparents, my relatives, friends that have moved on and come back. They can be your friends and relatives. I just believe that our energy, our soul, the one divine awareness would not only want to experience life as a human being, it would want to see and perceive and be everything it could possibly be. That's why I don't eat animals. Other than that, my friends, thank you so much for the question and comments. Uh, Taxi, if you're here tomorrow, man, and you need some guidance, if you're not comfortable sharing, asking the questions here, you can private message me on TikTok. You can private message me on Instagram. I always respond to everybody. Other than that, my friends, you go have a beautiful day. Remember, take this calmness and stillness with you and take moments today to just stop, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, feel that beautiful stillness within and go on from there. Thank you so much. I'll see you all tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's New York time, United States. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Instagram. And bye-bye, TikTok. Bye-bye, TikTok.